Hi everyone, Ajama Page today. I'm working in this journal that I, <clears throat> sorry, just bound all kinds of papers and this one is canvas. I had all kinds of pads of paper and I just combined them into a journal. I'm using this uh, canvas just because I want to get rid of it. I found out that I don't like to uh, work on it. So <laughs> I'm going to use this side but uh, you can do it on any and I want to start my page with all kinds of black and white element that would be in the back. I've got some scrapbook paper, some uh, white tissue paper that I've stamped with uh, black permanent ink. Some uh, from, this is just something that came in a frame that I bought. Some printout, a dictionary page that I've stamped and printed tissue paper that I got from Flying Tiger. So, I, I'm just going to tear pieces and play with them in the background. Most of it is going to get covered and pushed back. It's just to build a layer that gives interest in the back. So I'm not even trying to use all the same theme uh, all around like leaves or uh, flowers. I'm just going to put them, well, quite randomly. And I'm using just white glue. And because I'm not sure where I'm placing anything, I'm just going over. And let's see, I don't know. Well, let's put it here and that's it. So first layer is gonna look like a mess and it's okay. I'm just playing. I've got a butterfly. I'm being quite quick about it. Some flower here. Again from a frame that I bought. Here we go. I'm also going on top so everything will be coated and in place and will look the same. Some printed text. You see how the canvas is curling? That's what I don't like about it. Of course when it's dry it would be easier but right now it's just don't like it okay so let's put another like this and like this and so I can continue making a mess of a first layer okay let's take one more piece I like text, so here we go, and let's do another butterfly, again I don't know what will be left to show and what not, I'm just putting it uh, on and we'll just see how, how everything goes. Okay. Messy, messy, messy. Yeah. But it's fun. Okay. Let's put one here. I'm really trying to be quick about it because it really doesn't matter. Once it's dry, I'm going to go over with gesso with water so I can push back areas that I don't want to be so dominant in the background and also to make the edges blend more into the page. Let's see, maybe a little bit of this. 
just don't want straight edges and well let's put it here and I think this is enough I was going to uh, wait for everything to dry but now I'm thinking if I put now the gesso maybe just maybe I will have some uh, crackle because gesso and glue dries uh, differently and then you get cracks so maybe I can just spit it and if I'll get cracks great if not not so first I'm just going where the edges are to blend it into the rest of the page like so and in between pieces uh, this uh, the gesso here this is just a bottle of condiment that you buy in the cheap store and I put some gesso with water so I won't have to each time make a new batch now I have prepared it in the bottle so I can always uh, have it on hand on hand so as you can see I'm just blending areas that I want to push in the back and if I've got this piece that is more dark more and I don't like it then I will go over and push it back like here don't want it too much to be so dark and overwhelming the background then I will just go over and push everything back there is no rule to it it's just what you like to do and just playing with the elements And of course, if I feel that it's not enough, I can always use the regular gesso and cover something that I don't like. If I decided that I don't like this butterfly, I will just wait for everything to dry, take the gesso and go and just cover it. And of course, you can always keep on and covering with other pieces of paper if you feel the need to. Okay, so as I said, pushing back, you still see the, the elements, but they are not the main thing. And of course, there's going to be paint on top. Let's see. Of course you can use a brush, I just like to play <laughs> with this like that. And yeah, okay, finished my first layer. I'm going to let this dry and then I'll come back. Okay, so background is dry. Now I want some puddles of paint, which means that I don't want to control <laughs> the color and also you can use whatever paint you have that is not opaque because you want to keep some of the details in the back i'm going to use some acrylic inks i have because i don't use them and they they get dry and i just want to <laughs> finish with them and but you can use sprays and water down acrylics and watercolors whatever you have so I'm, I have a piece of acetate here and let's see, I'm just going to take some of it and I'm planning on just putting a drop like this. Let's see if it will work. And now I'm taking a spray bottle with water and I'm going to spray it. 
mm, I was wanting the, that to spread a little bit maybe I will help it yeah okay that's more what I was aiming for and now I'm just going to flip it over and wherever it goes it goes like so and now I'm going to clean this I don't care if this page gets dirty either uh, if I want to use it I will just cover it and put something on so I don't care if it's getting uh, some paint okay uh, I think I will switch to another color and this was if you are interested let's see this was Amsterdam and it, it's so uh, they write so little patello blue here is Amsterdam a uh, turqu turquoise blue so again just putting a drop like this some water I'm gonna help it <laughs> And again, just putting it down wherever. Another thing, even if you don't have fancy stuff, you can take regular uh, markers, felt tip markers. Let's see, I, I want to show you. Okay, just regular felt. Uh, felt tips spraying it now of course it's not intense as this but it can still give you the same effect so with watercolors or whatever you want you can take gelatos put them on the acetate again water and spread it and flip it over so it's the same process and you can use whatever you have let's see what other color I have got now I'm not waiting for each color to dry because they are basically from the same group of color so I'm not uh, concerned about them uh, creating mud they are not on an opposite of the color wheel, so I can just put this down and some of them are blending together, which is good, and some are making puddles. Okay, so let's see. What else do I, <laughs> do I have here? This one is Amsterdam turquoise green. The other one was a Del Della Rowney and it was dark green. This one was dark green. Now I'm taking the Amsterdam turqu turquoise green. Really doesn't matter. I'm just playing. Okay. And of course you can decide for yourself how much water you like. If I want areas that are a little bit more opaque, then I will put less water. Yeah. And I can create here another background. <laughs> <laughs> okay so I think now I want to uh, be a little bit more in control where the color is so I'm just going to reach for my watercolors this is a pelican set as far as I know they don't do make them on anymore 
this is like three decades ago I have it what I did find it I I did find refills but I couldn't find another set like this I don't know so I'm just taking some and in areas that I want I'm going to put a little bit more paint again I I'm not looking for something concrete just splotches of color in several places and let's hope that I can keep it uh, without covering everything I have a really big <laughs> problem with leaving white spaces so I'm really trying to let some white stay on the page okay so putting down some color where I want it and trying not to have straight lines or and still have puddles and if I feel it's not enough I can always take the spray bottle and help it like this and it spreads like this and in areas that it's uh, directly on the canvas, it uh, takes into the texture, so it's also interesting. But again, never going to put canvas inside a journal I have just no. Okay, cleaning my brush, and I just want a hint of a dark magenta or a carmine, as it says here. And... like this again I'm trying not to cover too much white I'm putting it in between the colors don't care if they are a uh, mixing together it's okay letting this spread and mix and just one more spot I think And again, letting it spread. Just letting it do its thing. Yeah. I can also tilt uh, everything and make some uh, drippage if I like it or not. You can play with it. So it's something in between controlling <laughs> the watercolor and not controlling. Okay, so I'm just tapping in several areas and just creating some purple in between. Mm. So I get more uh, shades of uh, the colors that I already have here. Okay, now I'm satisfied. I'm going to leave this be to dry completely before I'm uh, continuing. So uh, just one more thing. If you are using a uh, good watercolor uh, brushes, just clean them immediately. Don't just lay them in a jar with water like I do the other stuff and let them dry. I've picked uh, this thing from a cheap store it's supposed to be for a uh, makeup brushes and it works great also for my water brushes and fan brushes all the the brushes that I want to uh, stay intact <laughs> so I'll be back when this is dry okay my page is almost dry but a uh, it felt too cold the colors that I have here I really like them but uh, I wanted to add something uh, warmer to the background and I took I've got more of the acrylic ink from Amsterdam this is gold and I'm just going to go all over and just splatter it I've added a little bit of water and using a fan brush and of course now this needs to dry <laughs> so 
I'll be back. I'm back now this is dry I've got this stencil that I want to partly uh, go here uh, mostly I want the face maybe a little bit of this I uh, put some black acrylic paint here and I'm taking a makeup sponge just dabbing the excess and holding it down I've got a lot of texture and of course the canvas is curling so I need to hold everything in place and hope for the best and if it's not a a great uh, stenciling if something is going to run uh, underneath then I can always do some fixing with a black permanent marker so let's hope for the best also i've got a lot of texture so it's a little bit more difficult even just the areas of the canvas has texture so it's a little bit more difficult the stenciling part i'm not doing the whole image uh, firstly because I know that I want another element that is going to cover part of the face and also I don't want to uh, cover my whole background maybe later on if I feel that it's needed I can align it again and add a little bit more right now I'm just doing this part okay good enough so I'm going to let this dry and what I wanted to do I've already cut it I wanted to do some moon here like this and to cut this kind of thing you only take any kind of paper that you want and you take a, any circle you like this was from <laughs> I just flipped a plate and just go and move the plate or whatever other rounded object you have and decide on the size that you want and then cut it so i already cut my moon and i want to um color it i've got some uh, Pearlescent white. This is folk art, and I think I will add some uh, gold to it. I don't. I'm not sure yet. First of all, I will put some of this. I'm trying to make it fast because I only have like 30 and something minutes each time on my phone to a. Uh, make a video and then it quits on me so <laughs> I'm just covering everything with this and I still have a little bit of gold here maybe just add it towards the outside I need more gold Just letting it blend into the pearlescent white. So it's not completely white, it's not completely gold. Something in between. Okay, this needs to dry and I'm thinking that maybe I will add some more embellishment to the moon that I want to place here but still this needs to be dry before I'm attempting anything so I'll be back okay so I waited for the paint to dry and my moon was a uh, boring so I decided to take this stencil I made uh, with Celtic uh, symbols 
and just went over and spread them on my moon and now I'm looking at it and it was supposed to be like this and now I can see that I can continue the image without it uh, taking from the hole and so I'm just going to align it again and continue stenciling just the rest of this flowing <laughs> hair and some is going to get covered again but that's just part of the process Once again, trying to be quick and careful <laughs> at the same time. Okay, now I like it. So I've got my moon here. The only thing I'm going to do is adhere it to my page and then I'm going to take uh, just a black permanent marker and continue this or I will take uh, some brush and continue so I won't uh, have this boxed filling because the stencil just ended with a straight line so that's what I'm going to do and then we'll come back okay so finished going uh, and doing the hair and here the moon and now I'm thinking that I want to push back what's going here in the face I was already prepared to finish with the pay with this page but now I'm just going to push back this area and I'm taking a brush with water and some gesso again just diluting it with water and going to push back a little bit this area very gently I'm not uh, trying to make it a complete white just pushing some of it back you can still see the details one of my kids come back from school I can hear at the door okay so I'm just going to continue doing this And I'll come back. Okay, so finished. <laughs> finished with the face. Now I'm happy. I'm leaving it before I'm doing something that I will regret. So thank you for watching. And thank you for leaving me comments down below. I'll be seeing you in my next video. Bye for now.